Good morning, lovely Lonsdale. How in the world are you? God bless each and every one of you. Our uh, upcoming events, next week, the 15th, is our pantry preparation day. 16th is the pantry. Seems like it's a little bit early this month. Father's Day is Sunday, June the 19th. And, of course, uh, June the 27th is our United Methodist Men and Women's Meeting. For prayers of praise and thanksgiving, Steve Mays asked that we celebrate the life of David Marine. Mr. Marine died in Vietnam 52 years ago. Happy 45th wedding anniversary for Ed and Sarah Ankrum. Carol Latimer is thankful that her daughter's pregnancy is going well. Sherry Akers is feeling much better after medical treatments. The annual conference of the United Methodist Church begins today. Please keep the attendees in your prayers. For prayers of intercession, Please remember the following people. Diana Beckner, Cracker Barrel Waitress Beth's Mother Karen, Cracker Barrel Hostess Diane, Mark Allen and his mother Janice Carter, Carol Latimer, Amy Fowler, Becky Mingy, Gary Ayler, Laura Berman, Fred Adams, Lois Harbin, Mike and Jenna Caldell, William Winton, Michael Mays, Jeff Love, and there were many unspoken prayers. Thank you. I have some prayer requests. We are, our sister church and myself, reeling from some deaths in our family. Um, you, you remember Brother Frank passed away, his wife a few months later, and now her sister will be funeralized this coming uh, Wednesday. And uh, uh, she was a very integral part of, um, of our church. She's one of the communion stewards along with her husband. So pray for that family. Um, her name is Bonnie Gardner. Bonnie Gardner. Also pray for uh, Uncle Carl, as, as we called him. He has actually been in worship here with us on some Sunday afternoons and some of the things we've had downstairs. He's not a member of um, 
of Martin Chapel, but he's an integral part. He's a friend of our church, amen, and very integral part. And you all know Lynn Clemens, and that is Brother Clemens' uncle, Uncle Carl. So he'll be funeralized on Thursday. So we have two people that are part of our church who died on the same day. So pray for our church. And these families are connected as well. These are uh, two families suffering loss at the same time. He won't want to remember Brother, um, uh, brother uh, Twigger. He's, he's doing well, but he's missing us. And, and we want to remember him in prayer as well as long, as his, long with his brother-in-law, Herschel who's having a, a very difficult time. I want to especially lift up Sister Betty Mingy, who uh, uh, has had a, a health report, and um, talking to her is a source of encouragement. And we want to uh, ask that you all would lift up her and the sisters, who are her army bearers right now, and uh, on, on tomorrow, uh, she will um, find some additional information about her, her future treatment. So let's pray for her and bless her. And she's strong in faith, and but yet in need of our our prayers. On on tomorrow, uh, Sister Harbin will uh, surrender her body to the um, uh, caregivers at the hospital. But we know God, don't we? Amen. Same God who has taken her there and back before is the same God who will be dealing with her on tomorrow. So we ask your richest blessings upon her that the healing virtue from heaven will flow into all these areas that we've talked about and all the ones that Brother Gary has mentioned and for the transition for Sister Frances. And for the, the encouragement that I received from Brother Steve, who thought it not robbery of his time, paper and pen, to write me an encouragement note on this morning. Amen. Thank you, Brother Steve. Amen. Pastor just loves you. And uh, um, uh, Sister Betty there as well. Let's keep, keep on lifting each other in prayer because church prayer does something for those we pray for and for us. Amen? Amen. Join me now in the word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we celebrate the flame and fire of the Holy Spirit that is yet falling on us this morning. Lord, we bring to you our brokenness. We bring to you our sorrow. We bring to you our pain our confusion, our misunderstanding, our doubt, our uncertainty, because we know you can do something about it. Now bless us, Lord, as we further go in worship today. Touch every ache, every pain, every heart, every mind. And as we go, Lord, to Lake Junaleska, we ask, Lord, that you would grant that place with the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit that we would deal with each other with respect and dignity, that we would act like when we get to the lake that we know Jesus, regardless of our differences. Bless my wife, Lord, as she deals with the administrative arm of the church and all the preachers and all the messengers and all the congregations that will be represented, that you will get the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So many times in our divisiveness in the church, we are seeking glory for ourselves. Now, how do I know that? Because we're too quick to say, this is what I want. This is what we need to do, but we're speaking of ourselves. But our brothers and sisters, we have an opportunity as a church to demonstrate to the world 
that we can invite Jesus into our church, into our conference, into the United Methodist Church, and make a difference. Amen? So remember us in prayer. I got robbed. Let me tell you what happened. A little bandit dog named Bingo ate my tomato. Amen? It was a beautiful tomato. It was homegrown tomato. It, it came out of the soil that was transplanted from Granger County to Knox County for the sole purpose of growing me a tomato. But Bingo looked at it, he liked it, and he ate it. Amen. So pretty soon, Bingo has decided to come to church, confess, and bow at the altar. And we're going to pray for him. And me, and me and Michael, despite a very troubling week, we claim a victory because we did not go to Krispy Kreme or any other donut shop and get the free donut. Amen. Now, Michael was braver than I was. I tried my best to lobby for the donut, <laughs> but I was outvoted. Amen. It looked like the car turned everywhere but toward Dunkin' Donuts and, or Krispy Kreme. And I presented the idea, y'all, that it's good for the economy for me to go and obtain the free donut because if you buy one, you may buy 12. <laughs> My argument did not prevail. Amen. So we, me and Michael are claiming victory. We stayed away from the donuts. And, uh, but we're going to honor those who did. Amen. God bless you, each and every one of us. Our scripture reading this morning comes from John chapter 14, verses 8 through 17. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. If you love me, you will obey what I command, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him or knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The power of a promise. The power of a promise. 
Her name was Nell. She was my aunt, and she lived 19th and Long Street in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And every now and then, my sister and I and my mother would walk past over going toward downtown Chattanooga. we stop and see her. She lived in a green house on the corner, and she had a porch that wrapped around. Part of the porch faced Long and part of it faced 19th Street. It was a beautiful house to me. And she would sit out there in her rocking chair on the front porch, and oftentimes when we'd come by, She'd say, Walter Jr., how you doing? I say, I'm doing pretty good. How are your grades? Well, you know what I need to say. I said, doing pretty good. You doing all right in school? Yes, ma'am. Are you behaving? Yes, ma'am. I'm getting excited. This is my, it's mounting up. And she said, don't you have a birthday coming up when you're born in July? Yes, ma'am. Then she reach and get that old purse that little alligator snapper purse, amen? And she pulled that folded $5 bill out, and she kind of stomp her foot. Well, Junior, I don't have any change, but I promise you, next time you come by here, I'm going to have change. Well, what she didn't know, I had plans for $5. That would have been all right with me. You know, I was, I, I was just in the second grade, but $5 would have fit my situation way back then. And she folded that $5 bill back up. You know, she got a lot of miles out of that $5 bill. Anyway, every time we go by that, which was about every three weeks, she pulled that same $5 out. She tell me that same story. If I only had some change. The power of a positive promise. Her promise to me lost all of its power. I was polite. I nodded my head. I said, thank you. But in my mind, I said, I'm never going to get anything out of that $5. Amen. I guess when they buried her, they buried her with that $5. I never did see nothing but that little alligator person that folded $5 going back into it. But Jesus said, in response to a question, somebody said, show us the Father. We've been traveling with you for three years. We are some, we are some theologians now. We've grown up in the faith. Show us, Big Daddy. Show us God. And we'll be satisfied. Jesus said, no, you won't. If I show you the Father, you ask me another question. You ever dealt with somebody like that? Well, all I want to know is, well, if you just answer this question, you know good and well when you answer that question, they're going to ask you something else. Jesus knew that. He said, brothers, have you been with me all this time? And you did not hear my teaching? You did not see the miracles? You did not notice that I am the Father and the Father is in me and I am in him? I've told you that. I've preached that sermon. We sat around the fire and talked about my Father and I are one. And now you ask me to do a side show just for you to show a video game to show a PowerPoint. You all look behind the curtain when Jesus is in front of you. You want to deal with the mystery and you have the reality of Christ right here. I know you're troubled in your spirit. I got to go away. I got to catch a cloud and go back home. I know you're confused that I am God and I'm going to see God. I know that has baffled you. But I want you to believe. Because if you believe, you will receive. If you believe that I am the son of the living God, if you believe the words I speak, 
are from God, if you believe that God is in me and I am in him, don't try to understand it. But if you believe it, I, I, I didn't know how daddy could take a saw and some nails and some time and some wood, some scrap pieces of wood and make me something out of it. But I certainly appreciate, I accept it because I believed in Dad. If he said, I'm going to make you a little box. I didn't know the how. I didn't know the creativity that went in it, the measurements, how he'd lay his square down and draw that line. Didn't have a power saw, but he could saw straight and he could nail and countersink and put putty over. I didn't know all of that. But I know if he said it, it was the power, the positive power of a promise. Not like ain't now. She meant well. But Jesus told me, and he's telling me and you, I'm going away, but I'm not going to leave you by yourself. I'm not going to leave you comfortless. Because I know something about your disciples. Some of you, one of you are going to India. And you're going to be bored in all. One of you are going to be crucified upside down. One of you are going to be hanging on a spear. I know what's going to happen to each and every one of you. And you're going to need the power of the Holy Spirit to fall on you anew. I'm not going to leave you by yourself. I know that some of you are going to sit in Lonsdale United Methodist Church one day and you're going to wonder what's going to happen to me. What's going to happen to my body? What's going to happen to my mind? What's going to happen to my family? Family. I know some of you are going to wonder that as I go 80 miles down the road over into North Carolina, what's going to happen to my church? Is my church going to split asunder? Are people going to get mad and walk away? What's going to be left when the dust settles? Jesus said, I know all of that. I know what's going to happen to you. I know what's going on in your mind right now, but I know the power of the Holy Spirit. I can't stay, but I'm going to leave the Holy Ghost to be with you in your misery, to be with you in your pain, and to bring you out victoriously. Catch on fire on this Pentecost today. Is that all right, church? Amen. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for the Holy Spirit. I can't do it. Lord, and, you, and you, 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 you knew that I couldn't do it. You knew that I couldn't fix it. I just mess it up. You knew I couldn't change it. So you left me the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit to walk with me from now into eternity, through the halls of the hospital, through the halls of these various churches, through the halls of the general, annual, jurisdictional conferences. Walk with me, Jesus, through the dove of the Holy Spirit that's falling down in here this morning. Light on us and set us on fire. Burn up our sin, burn up our doubt, burn up our negative thoughts. And let us know if we believe in you, everything is just going to be all right. My brothers and sisters, it might have been a morning like this when Jesus knew he was going to die and he said, I need to leave you something to hold on to. I need to leave you something that's more than a Big Mac or a quick snack. I need to leave you a feast that's better than the Admiral's feast at 
Red Lobster. I need to leave you something that you can't buy at Ruth Crisp, amen? I've never been there. Y'all have to tell me about it. But I'll tell you this. I want you to do this, Jesus said, in remembrance of me. This morning, I preached and taught that there's a power, a very positive power in a promise. Jesus said, if you remember me, I won't forget you. If you remember me in your trying times, I won't forget you. I will bless you. I will answer your prayers. I pray every morning. Lord, let me see. Let me see, Lord, so I can get in the car and and go find Gary Beckner and worry him all day long. Let me see. So I can climb in the 18 wheel and ride around with Brother Mays. Let me see, Lord, so I can go and be with my parishioners, walk with them, talk with them, fish with them. I pray. And I remember, and every day I get an answer. Maybe not today, but I assure you as I stand here, one day I will see. Amen. One day I will see. It may be here in glory, but my that time of sin is not over. Amen. This blindness didn't come from the Lord. I'm not going to give him credit for it. I'm giving him credit now for my healing. Is that all right? We got a cup. We got a cup. We got a cup in front of us, Lord. It represents the broken body of Jesus Christ. It represents the shed blood that he gave us on Calvary. I'm going to pray. And elevate your hand if you don't have a cup. And our ushers will make sure you have one. We're going to pray for personal forgiveness, for sins. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And, you know, we forget that because we're always pointing at people and saying, no, there's some sinners. They don't need to be in our church. But we forget that the Bible said, Cross didn't say it. The Bible says we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all are in the process of being saved. We forget that little we forget that when we start pointing fingers. I wouldn't go to church with that thing. Aren't you glad Jesus came to church with you this morning? Amen. We are sinners being saved by the power of God. That's a piece of bread. Well, after we pray, we're going to consume this. It represents the broken body of Jesus the Christ. Our Heavenly Father, cleanse us, wash us, make us whole, infuse us with your spirit. Lord, thank you for the beautiful melodic verses that have gone ahead of in the reading of the word and the preaching and teaching of your word. Now, Lord, change us. Make us more like you. And thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now we ask that you would bless this bread and this wine, that you would make it different from the way it was packaged and make it something that's holy and make us different. Make us holy. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If you would hold this bread and receive it with thanksgiving. Now the cup. The cup is now before you that represents the blood of Jesus Christ, that stainable tissue that flowed out of him and into us to make us whole. Let us drink all of it with thanksgiving. Thank you for those who prepared our communion supper. Sister Bonnie was one of our communion stewards, and she was standing right here on Sunday morning. 
very gently and with discretion. She'd say, Pastor Walt, here's your cup. She'd make sure that I was uh, ready to celebrate the table. I'll miss her. I'll miss her. Remember us all in prayers. We, preachers be driving from North Georgia, from West Virginia to converge and messengers as well. And the spirit of holy conferencing. As John Wesley said, holy conferencing. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise for the Son.